Northside. Uh, we are hanging out here for Dear Church Session 7, uh, talking all things the church and the city of Laodicea. And uh, um, Laodicea was a city uh, very much wealthy, very well off, very self-reliant. Uh, I think one of my favorite stories about it is uh, they encountered an earthquake, destroyed the city, and they were so wealthy that they refused help from the Roman government and rebuilt themselves. And so that uh, very independent city, very similar to the culture that we live in today, a very self-reliant. Um, and in that passage uh, is probably, of all the seven churches, probably one of the most memorable, where Jesus says, you're neither cold nor you're hot, you're lukewarm, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. <laughs> uh, so as we're kind of unpacking this idea, I think that's where we want to start. Like, what does it mean to be hot, cold, lukewarm? Uh, define that a little bit more for us. Yeah, uh, this is it's just good Bible study principles. Uh, don't don't start with what we think about the difference between hot and cold. Like mm. somebody going, man, they're cold hearted. Mm, Jesus yeah. just wants us hot. He wants us on fire for him. The text is actually, I want you hot or cold, yeah. because and this is why we got to read. Even though we're 21st century, we got to read with first century mindset. Where they were at, they got hot water brought in and cold water, and they both had a purpose. Mm -hmm. And for us, what this is, this is where I, you know, because lukewarm water actually is what most artists prefer room temperature. So like if somebody goes lukewarm is bad. No, actually, that's what people want. They want room temperature water. So it's not even room temperature. It's that lukewarm doesn't bring replenishment. Lukewarm water doesn't bring refreshment. And then by the time it got there, it was so stagnant that it actually brought more disease yeah. <laughs> than yeah. it brought anything. And so when Jesus says, I want you hot or cold, he's going, church, I want you bringing replenishment. I want you bringing refreshment to the world. And Laodicea, you ain't doing any of it. And he's going, I, like, you can't be my church and do that. And so I, I'm about ready to spit you out. <laughs> like, yeah. And I think, I think it's huge because you go, sometimes Christians can get the rap for yelling at the culture like that. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is going, I'm not starting with the culture. I'm starting with the church. Yep. You're not bringing it. <laughs> you're, not br you know, you're not bringing any replenishment to a world that is thirsty for love and grace. So that's how it was good for me to put in the paradigm. It's not hot or cold. It's both have a purpose. Mm -hmm. And both are about the church bringing goodness to the world around them. And he's going, church, you're not doing it. Yeah, well, it's like, it means literally if you're no good to me, lukewarm. So I'm gonna spit you out. Uh -uh. Have a little spit take. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so I think I mean I think that's the the challenge in this because like I said the church in Laodicea was such like I said on their own. You know, really we can save ourselves. We don't really need much of anything else. And and I think there's this tendency that we all find uh, that we we will all find ourselves in a lukewarm season. Uh, it's yeah. it's going to come up, and we we don't always intentionally get there. We just find ourselves there yes. where we feel lukewarm spiritually or we feel like we're you know putting our confidence in something else other than jesus so i think uh, that's kind of the big question that we all have to wrestle with like how do we break out of our lukewarmness yeah. uh, if you would offer up some suggestions where would you begin for those who might be feeling that in their own faith i think part of it really it, you know and even looking at at the text i think it's verse 19 where he says uh you know those i love i re I, re mm -hmm. I rebuke and i discipline uh and, and he puts that on there, but he goes, so be, you know, earnest, so be zealous and repent. And what I've realized is to get out of a season, it's not that you and I would will get ourselves zealous. Okay, God, I'm really going to do better this time. It's that we would really allow what's better about God to hit us. Mm -hmm. I know going into the series, like, you know, coming off of Christmas, coming off of everything, I was tired, man, you know. <laughs> It's Christmas break really ain't a break when you got kids. <laughs> it's go, go, go. And yep. then it's, and then it's, Hey, here's the new year. And, and I was tired and then I got COVID and I was just in the cave, the COVID mm -hmm. cave downstairs. And that was where I feel like the Lord brought his zealous love alive for me again. Mm -hmm. Like I'm tired, somewhat in a rut just because it was just kind of go, go, go. And what I found was I got out of the rut when I was able to just sit with the zealous love of God. Mm. And so oftentimes we make the mistake, I just gotta be more passionate. Yeah. I gotta be more zealous. 
And he's going, when you sit really with me, I mean, even when he says, let me come in and eat with you, Mm -hmm. I think when you and I sit more with the Lord and allow that truth to come in and make space, I do, I needed to make, I needed that space. Yeah. I needed that space. Yeah. It's like the double-edged sword of, I mean, you even talked about the the rich young ruler. It's what must I do that we think to break out of the lukewarm, we need to do something. I did that my whole life. Yeah. I've been keeping that my whole life. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Come and come and follow me. Come and live life with me. And so, I mean, that's as it's it's already been done. It's just we got to break from that. It's not necessarily what we need to do. It's more of who we need to sit with. That's already been done. Yeah. And when we sit down, we can actually break this uh, a little bit. So, uh, so all right. So here we are. Like I said, session seven. We've spent. Uh, you know, seven weeks and two chapters of the Bible. Yeah. Uh, so God's been teaching all of us uh, through, you know, sermons, through His Word, through the daily, daily devos, yes. through life groups. So for, uh, just for you, what's the one thing from this whole series that's resonate with you or maybe God's taught you or encouraged you? Uh, you know, and I don't mean for it to be cliche. I really, again, in that, when I was downstairs in my cave, <laughs> I felt the Lord put on, on my heart not just for the series, but for the heart of the church. Mm-hmm. And, and, but, but even for me to go, I want you to be discipled by me. Mm-hmm. I want you, Nate, to allow, you don't have to figure all this out. Yep. We know the world is changing. We know it's changing every day. Mm-hmm. There, there's new circumstances, there's new threats, there's new things, and he's going, right. So be discipled by me. And that's what I see in all seven churches. Like Laodicea, I didn't even get to mention it tonight. No compliments. Hmm. Right? Just goes, I know your deeds. You ain't hot. You ain't cold. You're lukewarm. Spitting you out. And it's like, it's not even like you've got great comp coffee out there for <laughs> Laodicea. Yeah. Does it, like, no compliments. Just right at it. And then he also goes, and here I am. Yep. And he's going, I want to disciple you. I want to grow you. I want to walk you through this. And, you know, we even talked about too, what, what would maybe be uh, uh, Jesus saying to us? Yep. Northside, right? Uh, We're the, the eighth church. The eighth church, the eighth right? Church, if, yeah. if he's going to speak to us, which I think, you know, he's speaking to us every week, but I go, if he had a message for us, he would go, hey, right, we've been setting the table, right? We've been committed to our mission. We've been making room. We got more renovations we're going to do. But the last one is the one I think he's really speaking to us and saying, it's time to multiply. It's time to invest your life. I uh, saw uh, uh, a young man tonight uh, baptize another young dude. Mm-hmm. And I asked him, I said, hey, do you want to take his confession mm-hmm. and, and do it? And he goes, yeah. And to me, that was what I was most excited about tonight with Baptism mm-hmm. Weekend. I mean, every story was incredible. Yeah. But what I loved was watching a friend baptize a friend. And I'm going, that's the message. That only happens when you and I believe that Jesus is actually discipling us mm-hmm. and calling us to help lead others into this discipling relationship. Yeah, which I, I think, I mean, throughout all the seven churches, what's been so unbelievable just studying it is how much Jesus knew about each church and when he speaks to them. Like, I mean, Laodicea, exactly, just the language used of hot, cold, lukewarm. Like, everyone spoke their language to their city, to their culture, that only they would understand because he knows them. And I love, I mean, you mentioned the sermon, but uh, I love the NLT version of, at the very end, you know, when he says, you let me in, and the NLT says, we will sit and have a meal as friends. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's, that's it. Uh, that's it. So, uh, so that's a, that's a good place to end a little bit. And I think this is a conversation uh, to have either tonight in your group or maybe it's an extra uh, night in your group. As we talked a little bit, of what would Jesus say to Northside being the eighth church? But I think there's a question out there to say, what would Jesus say to your life group? Yeah. Um, if you walk through some of this, what would he have to say? What encouragement would he have? What challenge yes. uh, would he have? At the same time, maybe that's. Uh, to talk about what would Jesus have to say to your family uh, because he knows us and he wants to speak so much love and truth uh, into their lives. And really it's just some something like Laodicea is, are we willing to listen to let him in, uh, to sit down with him as friends? So with that, uh, we will wrap up here and uh, hope you have a good night of group and we'll see you in the next series.